This is the Coleco Vision, released by Coleco uh, as a direct uh, response to then rival Mattel's Intellivision. Now, when I did my Intellivision review, I didn't really use the best lighting that I possibly could, and the video came out extremely dark. So I thought I'd do, and just give you a second quick look at this bad boy, you know, with its fake wood green trim, uh, the overall design scheme, which Coleco uh, had no qualms about copying in uh, just about every aspect when they released their own system, uh, even down to the location of the uh, power button and reset button, uh, the design of the controllers, as well as the ridiculously short uh, foot and a half cords, uh, as you remember from my Intellivision review. Um, the only difference being with the uh, ColecoVision, uh, the controllers are not hardwired to the system, and as an added bonus, uh, Coleco thoughtfully put standard 9-pin plugs on the end, which means that you can use uh, any 9-pin controller, such as your Atari 2600, uh, Sega Master System, Sega Genesis controller, uh, anything that uses that standard format. And since most ColecoVision games only require a single trigger button anyhow, uh, you don't need all this other keypads or the extra uh, second uh, fire button anyhow. Uh, the only thing the keypad is used for is for making selections in games, uh, such as how many players, difficulty, that sort of thing. And uh, thoughtfully, or maybe it was accidental, I don't know, Coleco made it so that you can make those choices on the second player's uh, number pad, so you can select one player and then your difficulty level, and then the game play the game through the first uh, player port uh, using whatever controller you like. So you're not stuck to using these things. Uh, they seem like this is supposed to be an analog stick, but it, it is in fact not. It's a, it is a digital stick, just with a, a whole lot of uh, movement to it, which can make you know, fast uh, direction changes uh, quite difficult to pull off. Uh, now, there have been uh, other reviews done uh, that talked about the ColecoVision's massive uh, power supply. Um, Mine does have a massive power supply, but I must have a different revision than some of the other people uh, because mine has this giant brick in the middle uh, instead of at the end. So I don't have to fight with uh, wall sockets or other adapters to plug in my ColecoVision. It's got a regular plug on the end. Now why it took so many more years for the other game companies to get this right, uh, I believe the Nintendo 64 is the first uh, system after the ColecoVision to have just a standard plug on the end and it is now uh, commonplace uh, with the Wii, uh, Xbox 360 uh, and uh, Sony PlayStation 3. Now the cartridges for the ColecoVision uh, are actually very similar uh, to what you would find uh, for the Atari 2600 uh, as well as the uh, Intellivision. Uh, Coleco was not thinking outside of the box with this system. They wanted to do things similar to what the uh, best sellers had already done, uh, those being the Atari 2600 and the Tone Television. Uh, so there was no thinking outside of the box here. In fact, uh, some of the Parker Brothers cartridges you get, are almost indistinguishable uh, from each other. Um, if you look, can you tell which one's the 2600 and which one is the ColecoVision cartridge? Uh, not at first glance, probably. Uh, however, if you look, um, the uh, actual shape of the cartridges is a bit different, so um, the 2600 cartridge will not plug into your ColecoVision, uh, so you can't make that mistake. But that is where the similarity to the Intellivision ends, because the hardware in the ColecoVision was far superior, because it was released three years later. Now, much like uh, when I bought my Intellivision, uh, the ColecoVision came with a wide assortment of game cartridges already, so I didn't have to track anything down. Now those are the kind of purchases I like to make uh, with a classic uh, game system like this because some of these uh, old cartridges are very difficult to uh, get a hold of. And as we're going to see, uh, some of these cartridges have some surprisingly faithful arcade translations, uh, in particular Qbert and uh, Frogger, and as well as Centipede, uh, which we're going to take a look at here. Now, Coleco wanted to mirror uh, the Intellivision uh, so much that they even included a blackjack poker game much as Mattel did with the Intellivision. Now personally I think card games on video consoles is a very stupid idea. I mean why would I pay 20 or 30 dollars 
uh, for a card game when I could just buy a deck of cards for a couple of bucks. But uh, needless to say, uh, there really isn't much difference between this and the Intellivision Blackjack Poker. Uh, the only difference being is that the ColecoVision version doesn't feature this shifty looking character who is obviously shuffling more than cards. Now the first game that we're going to take a look at is uh, Nintendo's Donkey Kong, uh, licensed by Coleco as the pack-in game for the ColecoVision, uh, which proved to be a very smart move on Coleco's part uh, and helped sell uh, a lot of ColecoVision systems. Now graphically, the game is uh, very impressive for a second generation arcade port. Uh, the only objection I have to it are the extremely tinny sound effects, which I feel they could have done a much better job of, uh, considering the sound capabilities of the ColecoVision. Now, the next one we are going to take a look at is the sequel to Donkey Kong, uh, Donkey Kong Jr. Uh, as you can see here, uh, graphically the game uh, resembles its arcade port uh, very faithfully, uh, much better than the Atari 2600 version or other uh, second generation versions uh, released. And the gameplay uh, remains uh, as annoying as uh, the original is. Uh, the jumps are very uh, uh, stiff and sometimes it's hard to land on platforms. Uh, but the original charm of the game is fully intact uh, and it, the sound was done uh, much better in this version uh, than in uh, Donkey Kong for the ColecoVision. Next up is the ColecoVision port of the famous arcade game Qbert. Uh, as you can see, uh, the in-stage intros were retained in the ColecoVision version, uh, something that was not done for the Atari 2600 version. Uh, the graphics in the ColecoVision version are amazingly faithful to the arcade port. Uh, unlike the 2600 version, which featured uh, simplified graphics. Uh, this really uh, shows off the arcade quality capabilities that the ColecoVision had at the time. Uh, something that uh, could not be done on the 2600 or in television. Uh, although, in the 2600's defense, uh, it came out in 1977, which is uh, five years before any of these games uh, ever showed up, even in arcades. Uh, so, the ColecoVision, obviously, being a much newer and much more powerful system, could better replicate the arcade experience at home at the time. Ah, Frogger. One of my two favorite arcade ports for the ColecoVision, uh, the other one being Centipede. Uh, this version is so close to the arcade original. Uh, all of the gameplay is left intact. Even the in-game theme music, which was absent from the Atari 2600 version. Uh, I sometimes, when I'm on the road driving, uh, this theme pops into my head, and I whistle along with it. Yeah, definitely addictive right there. Yes, the Atari Arcade Classic Centipede for your ColecoVision. Now, this was one of the most frantic uh, classic shooters of all time, and the ColecoVision uh, represents it uh, just about perfectly. Uh, in fact, uh, Coleco uh, released a rollerball controller for the ColecoVision just for this game. Uh, to replicate the arcade experience, as the original Centipede uh, had a rollerball type controller. Uh, even without the controller, uh, gameplay is fast and frantic, and the sounds are spot on, and the gameplay is spot on. Uh, this definitely uh, represents some of the best the ColecoVision has to offer. The final game that I want to take a quick look at is Minor Tool 49er. Uh, this classic platform game uh, isn't much graphically to look at, but the gameplay is awesomely addictive. Basically, you have to run across each section of land that is visible, uh, collecting objects as you go. Uh, when you collect the objects, uh, the monsters turn blue, and you can walk into them and defeat them in sort of a Pac-Man type thing. Uh, the gameplay is extremely addictive, um, and difficult enough that the first level is easy, but once you get to the second level, uh, I almost uh, I I can't e hardly beat the second level most times. 
Um, you also have a timer uh, that prevents you from taking your time in figuring out the level. Uh, so the game is very, very challenging and one of the best games available on the ColecoVision. And there you have it. Uh, that's my uh, ColecoVision review. I hope you enjoyed it and uh, look forward to a lot more coming from Classic Game Vault in the near future.